I'm over here live. No hat. You're live? Yeah. Hello everyone, starting up a little bit early. <clears throat> you can write in the comment section, say hello. We'll start in a couple of minutes. Um, put my phone on silent because uh, I actually get a lot of messages. I get hundreds of messages. Hello, Salim. Thanks a lot for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Pascal. What's up, Joe? To the moon, thank you. I don't know how to say your Korean name. I'll address a lot of those questions. Uh, I'll have a few things that I wanna go over and then we'll go over to open Q&A, okay? Good evening, Ian, thanks a lot for joining us. Nicholas from London, hello, what's up? Manisha Patil, thanks a lot, hey. Hello from Vancouver. Love that place, really nice. I've got some artwork from Vancouver actually. Hello Mahar. Hello Tope. I'll address that. We've mentioned it a bunch of times, so. Hey Gustav from South Africa. I need to go over there, haven't been. Haven't been. Yo, yo Kyle, what's up? Hello, Nasir. Hey, Marvin. Hey, Nick. Hello, Shafiq. Hey, Kenneth from Ireland. What's up, Christoph? Fantastic. Yeah, we'll get started uh, in a few minutes, actually. I'll just give some more time. Racking up 100 and something people. I wonder if we can break our record. I think we had about 250, maybe 300 the last time. So, all right, Gustav, for sure, for sure. I'd love to go to South Africa. Hello from Poland. Hey, Patrick. Wayne Lambo, D'Angelo, come on. <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt? We may go to London soon, so we'll definitely uh, hit, up a, hit up a pub and go and uh, talk a bit. Hey Kamal, how's it going? Wind Moon? Verge Life Online. Hey, what's up, Joshua? What's up? All right, Kevin, how you doing? Hey Matthias. Hey Simon, thanks for not liking the fact that I don't like suits. You know, um, the last time I wore a suit for work was actually when I worked for a brokerage firm, and now I guess we're trying to figure out how to destroy them in some way. Uh, not really. Um, I personally like this whole thing. We actually have new hoodies and new shirts that we had a Romanian designer do for us. It's actually pretty cool. We've been sharing it with the community. Um, so uh, we'll be selling all of this stuff soon. We'd like to have an actual store where we'll have the merchant services platform to be able to sell some of this clothes and a couple of other stuff. Uh, that we have. All right, so we'll just get started. I've, I've given a couple of uh, minutes for people to join in. Um, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over some questions and uh, some updates from on my side. Uh, probably take me about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Uh, I'll try to speak slowly. I'm ac actually a naturally fast speaker. And then from there, uh, I'll open it up to uh, Q&A. Okay, so uh, here's what we've done in regards to coin distribution. Uh, we've got 100% completed for the people that have submitted their wallet addresses. Um, now we have a few percentage of people, it's probably less than 1% of people that have actually had some issues with declines and, and referral issues and we're taking care of those uh, bit by bit. 
um, you know, once you submit to customer support, uh, we'll be able to help you out. However, there are many ways to contact us, and I, I'd like to let you all know that there are many ways to contact us, which is Telegram is, is, is one way. Uh, I'm available on Facebook Messenger. Um, it's just I'm pretty limited because I keep on focusing on, on distribution and making sure that we get that done as soon as possible. Um, you know, my motivation is to kind of get this all finished and over with so I can go and focus on a lot more on the business side, right? I mean, time management is extremely important when it comes to running uh, an actual business. So I um, want to let you guys know that we do know that there are some issues and we're happy to fix those as soon as we can, okay? Um, now, we still have over 4,000 people that have not submitted their token pay wallet addresses. That's actually down from about 4,900. Uh, we're getting about a few hundred a day that have actually submitted their token pay wallet addresses. Um, if you still have not, uh, keep in mind that it's very easy to do. If you go to our website and go to the tutorial section, you'll be able to download our software or look at a video of how to actually use it from the desktop. We actually highly recommend that you use the desktop version. Uh, number one, it's, uh, it's up. It's always been up from day one. Uh, number two, you're able to participate in the staking rewards. Uh, something that a lot of people don't understand is the, the proof of stake. Uh, and, and what that technology is. It's basically an incentive system to basically use your network or use your computer um, so that you can be part of the decentralized network. We do not have that available for um, mobile right now, um, so that's why Android's been down. We've been modifying a few things uh, because it's such a new kind of technology to be able to use uh, with proof of stake as well as some of the adjustments we have made. So we highly recommend that um, when you see the Android up, move your coins over to the desktop wallet uh, that way you're able to participate in the staking rewards. Um, again, the way it works is if you have 100 coins, uh, if you're using your computer 24-7, by the end of the year you'll get, you know, kind of a, a few coins as compensation um, for, you know, using your network or using your computer's resources, okay? Uh, so some people uh, will get them daily. Now, staking, um, a little bit of a tangent, staking and the actual reward itself is not based on only about how many coins you have. It's actually based on a lot of random things, um, staking, network weight, uh, how much coins you have, um, and, and, and persistence, like how often are you online and helping out the network. So there's a lot of different factors that actually you know, improve whether you can, you get more rewards or faster rewards than others. So um, you know, obviously the best situation is to have the most amount of coins that is 24 seven running. That's what you wanna be, or that's the kind of situation you want. But it does not mean that you cannot participate or not receive the rewards. Okay. Um, so business of, um, okay, sorry. So so with 4,000 people that have not submitted, please try to submit the desktop wallet. Um, that's what we highly recommend that we can participate in the staking rewards. At the current rate, um, just seeing how many people are submitting their wallet addresses, which is about a few hundred a day, we will be able to finish the coin distribution for those people sometime by mid-March. Um, just doing some math here, you've got 4,000 something few hundred a day, um, you know, so it takes time obviously to send those because we have to send those manually versus before we would send them in batches. So, um, you know, keep on trying to submit the wallet addresses. Again, if there's any issues that you have, please contact us. Again, on Telegram, we have a fantastic admin support. Uh, shout out to Danny and some of the guys there. Uh, Ark, uh, there's a ton of guys out there. Bala, a ton of guys out there that have been helping out, have been, you know, fanatical and, and, and helping us out to, to provide as best as a customer experience that we can provide, okay? Business updates, this is the most exciting part for me. This is really what I what I truly, truly care about, is what the business is doing and how well it's going to do. Uh, so we have formed two entities so far. Uh, the first entity that we have formed is in Costa Rica. It's called, it's gonna be called um, T-Pay Technologies. Uh, why did we form a, a, a company in Costa Rica? Number one, there's actually a lot of really good developers in Costa Rica. Um, there's a lot of online gaming um, casinos that actually operate in Costa Rica. And so those developers are actually very interested in blockchain-based products and services. Um, and, and given we're going into merchant services, there's actually a lot of good developers that we can recruit from, from that area. It's also you know, much lower cost. Uh, at the end of the day, we have to consider that we are a lean company. Right now, I'm working from home. I will actually move into an office soon. Um, but we're very lean, and that's uh, just the way we like to operate. Um, no reason to spend on money on stupid things or things that are unnecessary. Um, it does not mean, however, that just because we have an entity in Costa Rica does not mean that we will not uh, limit ourselves from hiring talent from all over the world. We will continue to hire from places in Romania. Um, it could be India, it could be all over the world, it could be China. So there's a lot of opportunities and people that we would like to hire. 
Um, talent is extremely important, and there's always a finite resources of that type of um, you know need for our business. So I, I don't restrict it, but eventually we're going to have um, you know a larger operation in Costa Rica. The second corporation that we formed is in Switzerland. Okay, uh, that one is specifically meant to help us convert some of our Bitcoin to cash or euros or Swiss francs, whatever is actually convenient for us. That's important for us so that we can you know purchase things that we can um, acquire. Uh, we can, um, you know, pay staff from that from that account. So this is just more financial. So if, let's say, for example, we want to purchase the bank, whether it's a piece of the bank, the whole bank, or fund the bank, or whatever it is, we can use that account to actually send that money over there. It's actually pretty. It's pretty. It's, it took us a while to finalize all of this, but we were able to actually do it, and I'm really, really excited about that. Probably visit Switzerland uh, and that area pretty, pretty often. Um, we have obviously a lot of a lot of opportunities there, especially in the Canton of Zug, uh, where there's a lot of startups out there that are actually doing a lot of amazing things with cryptocurrency. So um, we're probably going to go to a lot of places in Europe. Actually, um, it's not just uh, you know limited to one area, right? Uh, the whole world, really. Okay. Um, and so yeah, that's that's it for the business updates on the corporation side. Uh, we did two events, or we actually went to two places. Um, the first place we went to was Japan. When our first meeting was fantastic, we had. I think about 75 to 100 people uh, at the event, and it was fantastic meeting everybody. Of course, everybody was waiting uh, about uh, waiting for the coins, and obviously, many many people asked when exchange, when exchange. Um, you know, again, we've commented many times about this. Uh, you know, token pay is a utility token, and we cannot comment about exchanges. Um, so, you know, I really have to stand by that. It's just more of a legal thing that I have to say, um, and it's just important that I continue to mention this. Um, keep people keep on asking. I just cannot. This is this is this is our stance as a company, and we have to stick to that. Okay. Um, the, the second place that we actually went to was Switzerland. Uh, the whole point of going to Switzerland was to actually go and start talking to bankers and seeing how we can work with partnerships. And we actually found a fantastic partner, and we're looking forward to you know all the developments that we can do there. Um, so so yeah, those are the two actual uh, places that we visited. Uh, then sorry, my mistake. The third place um, I didn't visit, but my uh, but Charles Moscow actually visited our strategy advisor was Amsterdam, and that was to meet our, our admin, our Telegram admin, and some of the other people that have actually purchased our coin, and you know just gave them a few T-shirts and you know spend some time with them to thank them, really thank them for everything, um, you know, for, from all of the stuff. I mean, this has been a very exciting time. Uh, it's been definitely uh, not an easy time sometimes. We've got three months or four months of you know just stuff that we've had to, to deal with. You know, we've uh, we've admitted our mistakes and we've. We've been try working really hard to correct that, and the admin team has been able to help us out. Uh, like I mentioned before, we have 15 to 20 people on customer support helping us all the time. Um, you know, and I don't stop working. I, I literally work 18 hours a day, weekends. You know, uh, and it is what it is. Um, it's just I don't. You know, it, I just work nonstop, and I think a lot of the people on our team have worked nonstop, and I'm really appreciative of everything that they have done. All right, on the business side, what else have we done? We have signed an LOI to acquire a bank in Germany. It's actually by the Munich area. Um, keep in mind that an LOI does not constitute a full purchase or uh, that it's going to happen. An LOI means that there is a letter of interest, meaning that we have an intention to acquire you as soon as uh, all legal and all things are actually done and clear. So right now our, our legal team is actually working with the, the owner of the bank to make sure that everything is free and clear, that we can actually go and pursue the acquisition. Um, if it happens, then great. We can actually have a pretty quick close. If it does not happen, that's okay. We have other options. Um, and I think that's extremely important to understand that we are an agile team. We're always looking for plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, because at the end of the day, you have to. You have to in business and you have to in life. Um, if you do not, then you don't want to be stuck in a corner uh, where you're forced to make a decision. That's actually the worst thing that you want to do. Okay. Um, the other thing is the merchant services. Right now, what we've decided is we're planning on either acquiring an existing merchant services platform um, or you know, kind of partnering or white label with an existing one when actually fixing up from there. Um, it's just faster for us to do it. Some of these uh, offers right now that we have, we have three offers right now on the table, uh, whether to acquire uh, existing code or an actual platform. Um, it's actually faster for us, but at the same time, it's something that we know it's been proven, uh, it's been fast. Um, and it'll be very effective for us to just, uh, you know, work on and, and fix up and improve to make sure that it's, you know, the quality that I expect. Okay, so so that's pretty much it on the on the updates on the business side. Um, let's see. Mm. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, what I'm going to do now is kind of open it up to questions. Uh, I know that there are a lot of questions.
Uh, let's see. Okay, hold on. Not able to screw up on some of these questions. Okay. Oh, okay, Chandler, thanks a lot. Let's see. Yeah, Crypto Valley is actually where uh, Sean Davis, yep, that Crypto Valley is actually where uh, Zook Switzerland is. <clears throat> Pascal, yes, we can actually meet in, uh, in Zook Switzerland. We're planning on being there in April. I see where I can get more questions here. Sure, what's going on? Can't look at all the all the comments. Hold on a second. I used to see them all fast. Hold on a second. Uh, Joey, yeah, I see this question now. I don't know why I can't see them rolling like I used to. I'm on the desktop. Uh, Okay, so let's talk about, um, did you approve of Telegram members acting as escrow for, uh, so uh, n no, I did not approve that and we actually, uh, you know, stopped that. So really sorry, don't know, um, you know, how that happened, but um, that, that wasn't supposed to happen and we actually stopped it as soon as, you know, as soon as we, we got wind of it, we just stopped it. Uh, when will the Mac wallet be updated? Um, so Steph, I've actually seen uh, no problems with the actual wallet myself. I have a Mac myself and I haven't had any problems. Um, I know some people have had problems and usually it's because of viruses and, and, and um, basically with like, you know, defenders or anything like that trying to block any of the issues with, with, uh, with Mac. So you can try to see our videos. There's been a few videos that has actually helped out in regards to syncing issues and stuff like that. Um, however, if you have a um, report that you can send us, please send it to team at tokenpay.com. And I can look at the report to see what the issue is. But I have a Mac. I have uh, High Sierra, which is the latest version, and I have not had a single problem with it. Okay, and I'm sure. And I've also tried through virtualization tools like um, uh, VMware and stuff to other versions or other versions of the software, and I haven't really had a problem. Okay, uh, Pascal, one bank. I just mentioned stuff about the bank. Uh, we hope to be able to do it pretty quickly. However cannot predict any of this stuff. I mean, this is dealing with regulators and, and governments, and it's, it's not, um, you know, sometimes business people can make decisions pretty quickly, but, you know, when it comes to banks and regulators, you know, they take their time, and that's part of the process. We have to respect that. Uh, can you t talk a little bit about the staking, please? Um, I can get one or more day unaccepted stakes with the message generated but not accepted. So, um, yeah, so it's very rare, actually, in reg Joey, in regards to the actual staking. So what ends up happening is you can um, generate an actual stake, but because you have already met the criteria of, of receiving a certain percentage, more or less throughout the entire year, um, you're not entitled to it. So you may have generated it, you may have been given it, but because of not meeting the requirements, you were not officially awarded that stake. So that's extremely important to understand. Um, we'll try to work on seeing so that it doesn't show up on your wallet, that way it's a little bit easier. Uh, to understand, but that's essentially why that's occurring. Okay, I get it myself. Uh, I tested it a few times uh, before we launched. We tested it to see, and I saw, oh, you know, uh, generated but not mined. So, you know, I, I'm very well aware of everything that goes on with, with all of this stuff with that te technology. Okay, again, I can't, for some reason, I can't see more questions. I'm trying to see if I can um, get more.
I'm going to go on my mobile phone to see if uh, I can get these questions better because for some weird reason on my desktop it's not working. Okay, so John C. John has had, haven't. I'm seeing these questions, but they're coming up slowly. Uh, Mac has been not been an issue. Um, yes, everybody wants to know about exchanges, and I explicitly said that many times, and I really don't feel like repeating myself 50,000 times. Um, yeah, so when are you going to buy a T-shirt and a hoodie? Um, I'd like to have a store up pretty soon. Um, I, the most important thing is actually merchant services. Once we have the merchant services, then we will have our store. Um, that's kind of our showcase, and that store will only accept TPay. That's the intention. Only accept TPay, and then we'll worry about the you know the actual conversions and stuff like that to the actual um, to the actual uh, dollars. Okay, so see, this is weird. It's 556 comments, but I'm only seeing 301 here. Conversions and stuff like that to the actual um, to the actual um, dollars. Okay, so see, this is weird. It's 556 comments, but I'm only seeing 301 here. Conversions stuff like that to the actual, um, to the actual, um, okay. Okay, so see, this is weird. So, so Gustav okay. mentioned that do you think TPay will overtake Monero in the long term, uh, seeing that our technology is superior? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, you know, Monero has a very, very strong following, so it's very hard to, to beat that. I think our, our following is actually pretty good. Um, however, you know, given the, um, um, given the background and the history of Monero, it's not something that I personally want to be tied to. Um, however, I do think that we can be uh, pretty popular in regards to usage. Uh, that is actually why we wanted to do the whole merchant services platform, because we believe that if you have businesses and consumers that are interested in, in, in using uh, token pay for everyday things, um, then it's actually you know very useful. Now, why is it that you know you have companies like um, Squarespace or Square? Not, not Squarespace, Square or um, others, you know, not using Bitcoin. Um, it's not, it's not that they don't like crypto. It's that um, it's extremely expensive and unpredictable to be able to determine a price. So for us, um, we have no fees. There are no mining pools. We're not uh, centralized. Bitcoin is centralized. There's mining pools in Russia, China, and even parts of the U.S. Actually, that, that actually control these fees. Um, when we were doing transactions and even refunds in December, we were paying no joke. One minute would be like two dollars, which is high, and then the other minute would be twenty-seven dollars. And we spent tens of thousands of dollars uh, just refunding people in America, and uh, that was unsustainable. And at that time, it, it was hard to pass off that that cost to a consumer. So. So, for example, um, if you wanted to buy a cup of coffee for five dollars, why would you pay twenty-seven dollars in transaction fees? Uh, and you know, there's other companies and merchants that are trying to like pull some of these transactions so they're actually cheaper. Um, so they get one transaction at twenty-nine and break it up into like a thousand or whatever it is. But it's just so unsustainable. Uh, right now, you do transactions on Bitcoin, and it's about sixteen cents, fifteen cents. Yeah, three dollars for a cup of coffee. That's still, you know, almost uh, five to six percent. That's still unsustainable, especially for margins like that. So um, you have to consider all of these things. But for us, token pay, because we're a proof of stake system, um, the actual fee is 0.001. That is T pay fee, and that fee actually goes right back into the pool of uh, proof of stake rewards, which means that that's what keeps the perpetu perpetu uh, perpetuation of the actual blockchain. That way, it never runs out or anything like that. So to understand this technology and why it's different from um, others. and as you can see, if you ever send you know one T one T on a desktop wallet, it's extremely fast. Um, I think we're running about 45 second blocks right now. It could be longer. Um, we've had some issues in regards to you know speed and stuff like that, and to, to make it actually faster. But we want to make sure that you know all that stuff is covered because uh, we have some orphan blocks that we had to fix. But at the end of the day, this is the difference between you know Bitcoin and, and us. Right. In regards to Monero, I mean, they're proof of work still, still mine. So they could still jack up prices whenever they want. And that's why, um, you know, people are, you know, slowly starting to think about going to proof of stake, just like Ethereum has done. OK. Uh, can you tell us more about the partnership of Verge? Well, actually announced that a little bit more. Um, so, uh, you know, obviously we work very closely with uh, Sunarok and the actual advisor of Verge. Um, we think there's a lot of uh, synergies that we can do together. Um, and I think 
that when the appropriate time is available, we'll make uh, we'll make an announcement. In fact, uh, I think we'll make some type of an announcement within two weeks to a month. So there's a lot of opportunities. Um, and you know what? Not just Verge. I think there's opportunities with others as well. Um, you know, we see some that we really, really like, and we think that we can partner with them in, in different types of fields. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities, and we're, and we're always open to talking to um, different communities and different developers or different uh, uh, blockchain projects out there. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry for looking at the questions here, but um, this makes it a little bit faster. Buying T-shirts with T-Pay is the same as buying pizza with Bitcoin? Yeah, hopefully, if uh, T-Pay <laughs> gets the same price as Bitcoin. Um, oh, this is a very good question, Joshua. Actually, could you guys engineer a self-compatible cold storage wallet compatible for XVG and T-Pay? Absolutely. Actually, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's talks of us trying to work with uh, some other blockchain projects out there where we can actually do a cold storage wallet. Uh, we thought about uh, the other ones that are available now, but then we noticed that there was vulnerability with one of them, and it just it just stinks because you really want to work with uh, some of these and, and make sure that everything's all free and clear. So um, for us, absolutely, there's there's definitely opportunities. It's just one thing at a time, right? Uh, we know I do like 5,000 things, you know, all the time, but the, the focus, focus on coin distribution, focused on fixing issues with clients, fixing on the referral. Uh, making sure our refund process has been finalized. I mean, literally, we have maybe 100 something people that have still have not been refunded in America, and that's not because we don't want to refund. It's because people have been unwilling to sign or forgot to sign the actual form. We cannot uh, issue refunds unless people sign those forms uh, back to us. But Joshua, fantastic question, very good question. Um, yeah, Moonbeam. So it's not Puerto Rico. It's actually Costa Rica. Puerto Rico. Um, people are actually going there for tax purposes. Um, however, it does not mean that we may not go there, uh, you know, ourselves. It's definitely a, a growing community in, in the crypto space. Um, but we have to look at what's available for talent. Talent is extremely important. You know, moving uh, to an location just because of location is not good enough. It's got to be about talent, always about talent. All right, Sean, how's the growth in Asia? Um, so we haven't really started anything off in Asia. What we have been doing is talking to a lot of partners. Um, let me give you an example of some of those meetings. I think I never really uh, went into some of those meetings. We went into about seven or eight meetings or more. Uh, one of the meetings was with a Japanese company um, that's got a few million members on their website, and it is a point system uh, company, which is, you know, in Japan, point systems, just like we have here, are very popular where people will have, for example, uh, points in an airline and want to convert it to something else, uh, whether it's a gift certificate or you know a massage or whatever it is. And so there's an opportunity for token pay to be one of those providers um, as well. So like if you have airline miles, you can actually convert it to token pay. So the only problem is is that um, you know what is the fixed price of token pay, et cetera? What is the price that um, that they would have to you know kind of work with us on that? The other is uh, another one which uh, you know we haven't signed any deals yet the other one was a CEO of a company of uh, adult webcam which uh, was explaining to us the frustration of conducting business um, he doesn't do anything illegal not illegal in, in Japan uh, however all of his financial infrastructure is reliant on Visa MasterCard and some of these other companies and every time they get a kind of a whiff of that um, what his business is or whatever it is and I'm pretty sure he's you know explained to them exactly what the business is uh, they pull the plug on him so um, he looked at us as an opportunity for us to provide a solution for him so there's actually a lot of positivity there and um, he has networks to the other other websites in other parts of Japan and in Asia so for us it's an opportunity you know it's business um, it's legal it's not something that we can do. That we. Uh, it's not something that um, I would personally open a website like that. But if it's if it's legitimate, it's uh, it's a legal business, and those businesses pay taxes and all that. Then I'm we're all, we're all game to do that. Um, but you know, uh, just like anything, we have to be cautious. We have to look at exactly all of the the material, make sure that it's all stuff that we approve. I mean, we we do have at the end of the day values and uh, and ethics and integrity that we like to hold um, and and you know uphold. 
And I think that's extremely important to maintain. So uh, another thing that actually started happening was in the Philippines. We're actually talking to a remittance business that's actually considering looking at crypto. There are a few companies in the Philippines. For example, one is called CoinsPH. Coins.ph was actually pretty popular in the Philippines where you can actually pay with Bitcoin, your utility bills and stuff like that. That's a huge opportunity. I mean, it's a country with more than 100 and something million people who are English speaking and get it. I mean, I can see people in all over the Philippines that say, yeah, T pay me. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of overseas workers that work in uh, the States and other parts of the world that actually send money back. And that's where the real business is. So there's a lot of opportunities and, and doors will open. Doors have been opening. And that's what's really exciting about, um, you know, working at Token Pay. Okay. Keep on looking at questions here on my mobile. For some reason, I can't see it on my desktop. I apologize. Sorry, I'm still looking at all the questions. There's a lot of uh, repeated questions. In regards to staking info, info, there's actually a lot of YouTube videos that have been created. I mean, you can actually ask in the Telegram group all of the videos that were actually created. I think we've created, I think, 20. And uh, we're going to release a new version of our desktop wallet. Just It's just a different UX, um, so it looks a little bit more token pay branded um, soon. And then we're going to have videos in about 10 or to 15 languages done by people so that they can have a full, full overview of how to take advantage of all the features of our desktop wallet. So the, the, I mentioned before that the Android server has been up and down. It's just been inconsistent. We keep on fixing some bugs because it's been relaying some orphan blocks from the actual blockchain. Um, however, when you do see it up, um, if you have coins there, I would suggest that you move it to your desktop wallet as soon as possible. Um, you know, the, the most live thing that you can do, and like in other words, like if you want to know something that's happening real quick or or want to get like a live update, go to Telegram. We have over close to 14,000 people on that chat. And uh, if anything new happens or whatever, uh, it's all there. You know, like I post some stuff there every once in a while. Um, there's like these nice graphics that I get from people that I share, or if there's any designs that we have from shirts or whatever it is, I put them up there. So if, if you really want to stay in tune with our community, just go to the tele Telegram group. And you'll be able to interact with me personally and, and a few other people as well. <clears throat> Thank you, Galost. I know it's a lot of work. I uh, appreciate your patience and for and all your help so far. I look to do a lot more stuff in the Netherlands and in uh, Amsterdam. Looking forward to going there sometime in, uh, in April, okay? Marius, yes, the plan is to buy a bank, partner with a bank, or form a new bank charter. That still has not changed from anything on our, on our white paper. I mean, everything that we've said on our white paper, we're actually executing on. Uh, it's either work in progress or actually going to be done, okay? Uh, one thing that we will not do is buy a bank for the sake of buying a bank. I, I don't agree with that. I'd rather wait and postpone or push back until we get exactly what we want. So, I mean, it's very easy for us to buy a bank in some random country and just say, oh, we bought a bank. That doesn't do anything to me. It doesn't do anything for what we're trying to, what we're trying to do. Pascal, yeah, I could do a few hundred, if not more, per second. Um, um, so it's not an issue, really. It's not an issue in regards to actually holding, holding the load. You know, there's some people out there that are trying to get to like that visa standard of tens of thousands of second. Um, we're still very small. We still, we still have time. We still have time to continue to develop and improve um, the blockchain so that we can handle more and more speed. So there's a lot of opportunities to improve that. Um, Anisha, yeah, in regards to the Blue Diamond card, yeah. Uh, once we set up the bank and we have it all set up, then it would be just delivered like anything else. Very simple. Yeah. <sighs> 
some of these questions are really funny. Um, when Lambo? I actually don't like Lamborghinis, believe it or not. Um, they look pretty, but um, I don't think I like to drive it every day. It just seems uh, not comfortable, right? I cannot predict anything about price or market cap forecast or anything like that. Um, all of this stuff will eventually be solved eventually. Okay, guys. Uh, Hiro Yuki, yes, from Japan. You mean about T point card? Yeah, there's actually a ton of companies like this. Um, I know that Yahoo Japan has it, but we met with a few small, smaller players that actually do this, and we're planning on partnering with more than just one. I think it's prudent to work with a few of these. Um, it's just a way, it's a better way to actually diversify our, our opportunities. Candice Lynn Dorsey, these are actually really good questions. What are the importance of Visa, MasterCard, and crypto relationships? Um, if you want to have a debit card that works in every single ATM in the world, then you definitely have to have Cirrus, Visa, MasterCard, okay? Um, now, there are several options. If you have a bank and the bank has a deal, can make a deal with Visa, MasterCard, and they're okay with crypto, which is extremely important, um, they have been overall been okay with crypto. They have just been extremely cautious about uh, working with specific companies that do not do their due diligence or AML or KYC. Now, what Visa, what Visa MasterCard cares about is the transaction fiat, okay? Um, that's what they really care about because that's how they collect their fees. Now, if we wanted to not use Visa MasterCard, then we would have to use a third party or another type of provider so there are others out there, believe it or not. If you ever look at the your card, your bank card, sometimes you'll see these like little symbols. There's like five or six of them there, and we could talk to one of those. Um, the other one is actually creating our own ATM network, which would be expensive, but that could be fine. Uh, we could open five ATMs in London, you know, a few in Madrid, a few in Amsterdam, you know, a few in certain parts of the world. And if people want to work with you know with us and, and be able to do that and manage it, whatever it is, then that's fine. There's a lot of ways to, to go around uh, doing that. Um, it's just a process. Um, it takes longer, but that is that is an option. You know, I think you know we all work business people at the end of the day, and we always try to look at what is the fastest way that we can do something that would be um, right for the customer, but at the same time safe and secure. But if the decision does not make sense for us or the, the industry does not want us to do it for whatever reason, then we're going to look at other options. And that's just the, the hard, cold reality of things, you know. Uh, in business, you cannot be emotional about stuff like that. You have to just kind of um, go for it and, um, and adapt. Always always adapt, adapt, adapt. If you, don't, if you do not adapt, you will die. So uh, that's my answer to that. Candice, fantastic question. I mean, I probably went a little bit deeper than you wanted to, but it was a fantastic, fantastic question. Uh, platform, if you're talking about the actual merchant services platform, we're aiming for the uh, end of second quarter, but um, you know we're going to make the right decision that's best for everyone. So if it's if it's a better platform and it's going to be third quarter, then it's going to be third quarter. But that is the goal right now, second quarter. We're still in the first quarter. Uh, we're in month two of Q1. So, um, Lucas, good question. Um, when we have more of the merchant services stuff ready, on uh, the front page of the website ready, we'll remove all the stuff about the, the token sale. Uh, no, there will not be any token burns at all. Ivar, I do not know when you get your Lamborghini. I think a Lamborghini costs $150,000 here in the States, so I don't know. I don't know when, you, <laughs> when you'll get your Lamborghini. You did about Keith. You said you've seen two videos on staking by the same Dutch guy. Yeah, his name is Ruben, by the way. Everybody has a name. Um, and not detailed at all. You know what, Keith? Send me an email at team at tokenpay.com. Uh, put in the subject, Keith McLean, Facebook Live, question about staking. And, you know, ask your specific question, and I'll help you out, okay? No, do, we do not have a coin burn policy at all. No coin burns. Can you make it easy so that a desktop wallet is easy for a kid to, to, to use that will help getting a new coin users? 
Um, that's a very good question. Um, right now, no, we do not. Um, I think there's definitely a possibility where we can make it extremely easy where there's maybe a mobile app that we can have specifically for kids. I'm actually really good. Uh, I, I'm actually, I actually really believe in, 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 in children as basically high school uh, and learning how to actually use our technology and crypto in general because that is actually where um, adoption really starts. It starts in high school. It starts in um, that, that type of uh, environment. And what I think happens is the college kids come up with the ideas and make them, and then the high school kids are the ones that actually start to use them and massively adopt them. You look at Facebook. College kids, they use it in college, but the reality is that you know, high school kids really took it to the next level. And you look at Snapchat, you know, all these amazing platforms for tech, they all started. You know, Google was started by college, but it was just used by everybody. But you know, high school kids use it to do research. Uh, that's how I used it. So yeah, I think there's an opportunity for us to, to look at um, you know, making a better app or a good app that's very easy for high school students to actually learn about crypto. So it's actually educational, but at the same time start to learn how to use token pay. It's such a great name that it's very easy for anybody to really uh, understand. So Glenn, you asked me if I was born a woman. I don't know if that's a really cool question to ask, but no, I was not born a woman. But thanks, just for, for humor's sake, I, I might as well just embarrass you by, by as I saying that, you know, very nice of you to ask that question, Glenn. Thanks a lot. Hey Ben, thanks a lot. In regards to the email hack, you know, I re really don't know what happened, to be honest. We looked at our servers and there was actually no hack. Uh, it could have been potentially something else. I, it wasn't a hack. We had we definitely got DDoS for a bit and we definitely didn't have anything hacked in regards to coins or anything like that. Um, honestly, I, I really don't know. I still haven't been able to find out. I do know that if there were a few hundred people that got emails. Uh, unfortunately, some people um, fell, victim, fell victim to that. So, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna stop right now. That's okay. Uh, again, if we have any other questions, uh, please uh, let us know. We'll definitely be available in chat. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it.